All right, so yes, uh, I have my stuff far in advance of Christmas. I get that. It's November 9th, and I already have my Christmas stuff up. Listen, it's 2020. We could all use a little bit of early Christmas this year, all right? That's the last thing I'm going to say about it. By the way, peep the proper 12-bottle Christmas tree. You get it. You understand? I got an elf back there. All right, so we're going to lead off the show with UFC Fight Night uh, Vegas 13, I think. Yes, 13. Um, we're going to talk about one of the most vicious things I've ever seen in a UFC fight. So Max Griffin. Uh, fighting at 170 this weekend. I don't even think he was on the main card. I think he was on the prelim card. But one of the most vicious and gruesome things. I'm not going to show it here on the podcast if you guys want to go see it for yourselves. Uh, I maybe, maybe I'll link that in the, in the description. I don't know yet. But uh, one of the most gruesome things I've ever seen, Max Griffin, uh, a guy that are at 170 is kind of middle of the pack, but he's a great fighter. Um, I remember I watched him live fight Mike Perry in Orlando when I was living down there. Anyway, this week he had Ramiz... Brahimaj. Ramiz Brahimaj. Um, sorry if I mispronounced your name, my guy. But uh, they, they fought this weekend on the prelim card at the UFC Apex. In the third round of this fight, Max Griffin was starting to come on strong, and he was, was starting to slice up with those elbows. And if you guys haven't seen a lot of MMA, or if you have and, and you don't quite understand why elbows do so much damage, the elbow obviously is one of the hardest parts of your body, right? It's so easy to use as a weapon but not only that, but it creates cuts and it's like a razor blade when it hits skin because they're, you know, for some people, elbows are some of the sharpest points on their body for me too. And for Max Griffin, it's obviously the case because he was throwing nasty elbows coming forward on Ramiz. And toward the end of that round, he gets a TKO when he throws an elbow. I think it was his, actually his right elbow, throws an elbow and not only hits the ear of Ramiz, but detaches it. It looked like a piece of, of Ramiz's brain was hanging off the side of his head. It was like at the cauliflower part of the year. It was dangling off his head. It was one of the most gruesome yet awesome. I mean, you can't. that was pretty sick. One of the most awesome things I'd, I'd seen in an MMA fight and just proved how brutal this sport can really be. Max Griffin was, was just elated with the win, but also, you know, felt bad because he left a guy's ear hanging off his head. But um, it just shows you, man, MMA... I've said for, for a long time that this sport, I, I barely consider it a sport. Um, I consider it hand-to-hand -hand combat on the highest level um, more so. Yes, there is a rule set involved, so that would that's what makes it a uniform sport with the no you know kicks to the groin, eye gouges, uh, 12 to 6 elbows, and, and kicks to the head on the ground, stuff like that. But at its, at its purest form, man, this is, this is combat. And we saw it again at UFC Fight Night 13, Max Griffin throwing nasty elbows, and detaches a man's ear from his head. Uh, again, I'm not going to show it here on the podcast just because I feel like that's something that you guys, if you want to see, you can find. If uh, I'm not going to expose you to that kind of carnage if you don't want to see it. But this was just a, a, an expose in reminding people how brutal this sport can be and how, how real it is when these guys get into the consequences. And, and this goes across all combat sports. You've seen people die in boxing matches, and that's, I think, because of repeated trauma over and over and over with the standing eight count um, that you get in boxing and with the 12 ounce gloves, they're not necessarily a one shot KO in, in some cases, especially at the lighter weight classes. But at the highest level of MMA, you're going to see more technical battles and you're going to see, yeah, you're going to see knockouts. And you're going to see guys stand out and have these brutal wars too. But I would say at the lower to mid tier of MMA, and I'm not, this isn't disrespectful to, to Max or anybody on the card. But when you're not at that highest level yet, you're going to see more wars. You're going to see more of, of, a, of a clash of, just all-out vicious carnage versus, you know, a stylistic matchup that guys are looking to technically win on or guys that do have a technical advantage. At those lower, you know, rankings, guys are going out there and brutalizing each other still. And the sport is evolving, you know, year by year, month by month, and it's it's far and away above where it was five years ago, where it was two years ago. The sport is evolving quickly, but you still have these instances where you get reminded that this sport is dangerous, and it is a not only a health risk, but a life risk getting in there and, and fighting. And what I'm trying to, to, I guess, articulate is that this sport is is made for a different breed of, of human. And they don't get paid enough to do this, man. They really don't. And that's that's a big deal with fighter pay. I'm not going to get into it. But to sever a man's ear, you got to be a different level of savage. Congratulations to Max Griffin, Savage of the Week report. I like this, Savage of the Week. We should we should do this more often. Max Griffin, your first inaugural award. Um, what would a savage get? I don't know what a savage would get that I have in my room, but uh, I found an award. Max Griffin, Savage of the Week. You get my red hand wraps because red is stained in the blood of a true savage. 
I like this series. I think we should keep doing it. Savage of the Week, Max Griffin, well done. And uh, Ramiz, I hope the doctors can, can fix your ear because it looked like human brain anatomy was falling off of your face. My condolences. Max Griffin, Savage of the Week.